Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to learn how to integrate Swagger UI in an ASP.NET Core Web API application. Swagger is a set of tools that helps us with the API production and documentation process. Although we still hear Swagger being referred to as Open API, this is no longer true. Open API refers to the industry standard specification for RESTful API design. In short, Open API is an industry standard specification for RESTful APIs, and Swagger is composed of the tools used to implement Open API. Open source Swagger tools consist of Swagger Editor, Swagger Code Generator, and Swagger UI. In this video, we are going to talk about configuring and using Swagger UI. It offers a web based interface that allows anyone to interact with the API without having to know the implementation. It's automatically generated from our OpenAPI specification and it allows for an easy documentation visualization. That said, we have created a new Web API application named Swagger UI and enable Swagger by default. To do that, we have to check this Enable OpenAPI Support checkbox. If we didn't check the OpenAPI Support checkbox, the first step for us would be to install the package. But since we are using a project with the OpenAPI support integrated, the package is already installed. If we expand the package, we can see three mentioned packages. The ASP.NET Core Swagger package contains the Swagger object model and the middleware to expose Swagger documentation objects as JSON. The Swagger generator builds Swagger document objects directly from our routes, controllers and models. Finally, Swagger UI is an embedded version of the Swagger UI tool. It uses Swagger JSON to build a rich, customizable experience for describing the web API functionality. With this explained, the next step is to configure the Swagger middleware in the program class. We can see two methods here. The add endpoint API Explorer method configures API Explorer using the endpoint metadata, while the add swagger gen method executes different actions. It adds MVC convention to ensure that the API Explorer is enabled, registers custom configurators, also adds different dependencies, etc. You can see all the different actions it does here. So, let's slightly modify this method. Let's provide an action delegate here and call the swagger doc method. This method defines a document to be created by the swagger generator. So let's provide the name argument here and also use the open API info class to provide the title, which is my API and the version as v1. Also, if we check the pipeline configuration part of the file, we can see two more methods. The useSwagger method enables middleware to serve generated Swagger as a JSON endpoint, while the useSwagger UI method registers the Swagger UI middleware. We can extend this method a bit by again providing an action delegate and then call the Swagger endpoint method where we provide the URI address first and then the name. By executing these steps, the Swagger is configured and ready for use in our project. Now, let's first add a new class to our project and let's name it Employee. This is simple model class with four properties, which we will use in our controller. It's simple as that. Next, let's create an API controller and let's name it Employees Controller. Let's simply paste some mock data here and keep the focus on understanding Swagger's capabilities. As you can see, these are simple actions that we will use to show some information in our Swagger UI. Now, let's run the app and navigate to the address we provided in our configuration. We can see 
that the document describing the endpoints is generated. To inspect the Swagger UI, we can navigate to the UI tab. Here we can explore the API and it is easier to incorporate it into other applications. Furthermore, we can see each controller and its action methods. Once we click on an action method, we can see detailed information like parameters, response and example values. There is also an option to try out each of those action methods. So by simply clicking on the try it out button, we can test the endpoint and see the response. Now let's look at the various options to extend the documentation. First, let's see how we can specify the API info and description. The configuration action passed to the add swagger gen method adds information such as contact, license and description. So let's provide some values for those. Let's first provide a description where we can describe our documentation. Then we can use the terms of services property to point out the URI where the user can read those terms. For the contact, we use the open API contact class and there we can populate several properties like the name, email and URL. Also, we can provide a license information by using the open API license class and populate the name and also the URL using the URI class. Great. Now let's run the application once again and explore the Swagger UI. What we can see is that the Swagger document is now updated with API info. Now let's talk about XML comments. To enable that, we need to open the properties of our main project and in the build tab of the project properties under the output, check the box labeled documentation file. We will not modify the XML documentation file path as we want the default path. Now, if we get back to our controller, we will see a lot of warnings for the missing XML comments. To suppress that, Let's get back to the Properties tab and under the Errors and Warnings we want to suppress the 1591 warning as well. Now in our controller we don't have those warnings anymore. Good, to continue we need to modify our Swagger configuration a bit. First, for the XML file we are going to provide a path by calling the assembly dot get executing assembly method, chaining the get name method and using the name property and at the end simply add an XML extension. Next for the XML path we will use the path combine method to combine the base directory path with our XML file path. Finally let's call the include XML comments method and pass the XML path variable as an argument. This method injects human friendly descriptions for operations, parameters and schemes based on XML comment files. Now in our controller we can use XML comments. Let's add a summary and provide description and what the method returns. Now when we start the application we can see the UI displays the summary against the action method. We can additionally add a remarks element to the documentation. It supplements information specified in the summary element and provides a more robust Swagger UI. The remarks element content can consist of text, JSON or XML. Let's simply paste that on top of the post request. Let's check this again and we can see this will enhance the UI with additional info. We can also decorate a model 
with attributes to enhance the documentation. To do that, let's add a required attribute to the email ID field of the employee model. Now, to check this, let's simply start the app and as a result, the Swagger UI will accept this change. Now, let's check our post request again. We already have some comments added here, but we can enhance it even more. So, as you can see, we have three more comments for the return message and the response codes. Also, I added two more attributes regarding the response types. With this combination, when we start the app, we can see some additional explanations in our UI. Great, now let's see how we can customize the UI. The default UI of Swagger is pretty good, but we can customize it if we wish to do so. We may change the documentation pages to represent our brand or theme. Branding the Swagger components requires adding the resources to serve static files and building the folder structure to host those files. So, first of all, we are going to enable static file middleware in the program class. And we'll do that by calling the use static files method. After that, we need to get the content of the dist folder from the Swagger UI GitHub repository. This folder contains the necessary assets for the Swagger UI page. Of course, I already did it and placed all the files inside the root Swagger UI folder. I've also created a custom CSS file with a simple CSS to customize the page header. To make this work, we have to reference custom CSS in the index.html file inside the UI folder. Finally, let's start the app. But this time, we will add the UI part in the URI. Also, after we get this page, we need to add the address of our JSON configuration file here. And there you go. As we can see, the UI is now customized with the changes we made. And of course, we can see all of our data. Great. Now we know how to integrate Swagger in the .NET Core application how to provide some additional information for the documentation and also how to customize the UI page. And that will be it for this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and also hit that like button if you like the video. If you want to get notifications from our channel about future videos, you can also use the bell button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.